Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we are concluding our two-part series entitled Flattery, Lies, and Consequences. This message is entitled Payback Ain't No Beach Strip. Some call it karma. Some call it revenge. But the Lord God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, and also Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30. Now, just a little summary or, or a little recap from last week's message. These high officials, they had flattered King Darius into signing the injunction that no one was to petition any god or man except for him, for King Darius, for 30 days or they would be thrown into the den of lions. King Darius unknowingly signed the injunction condemning Daniel, his most trusted official in all the land. There was nobody like Daniel, and he had just condemned him by signing this injunction to the den of lions. When he realized what he had done, he tried to rectify it by seeking a way to rescue Daniel, but it was too late. It was already done. It was signed, sealed, and delivered. Now, we're going to go ahead and pick up the account on Daniel chapter 6, verse 19 through 24, and we'll fill in the blanks as we go. Then, at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tune of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O oh, king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God and the king commanded and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions. They their children, and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Now the scriptures tell us that Daniel, knowing that the document had been signed, went along his usual way of business. He did not change anything. He continued the way that he always continued or that he had always done. He went to his house, went upstairs to his room, opened the window towards Jerusalem, got down on his knees and prayed. Not one time, not two times, but three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to his God like he had always done. He did not wait until a problem arose to pray. It was his modus operandi, his usual way of doing business. That was his usual practice. And neither did he let an injunction separate him from his God. Today, whenever a document or a decree is signed and enforced by our rulers or our government, the church is quick to cave in. They're quick to give up their, their creator endowed right to worship. Is worship so hard? Is it so laborious that we're so quick to just give it away? We do not need a go-ahead from any man or any government to worship our God. The, the whole world belongs to our God. He is the king and supreme ruler over all the land. We will worship even if it cost us our freedom, even if it cost us our our very lives. We will worship. We will say, like, the Philipp like Paul did in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But why? Why so confident, Brother Kenny? 
1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. And that's right. We are not ashamed of the gospel and we are not ashamed of the cross of Jesus. For through it, we gain salvation. Through it, we gain life. We gain eternal life. So praise the Lord, we are not ashamed of our God. And neither was Daniel ashamed of his God. He did not sit down and count the cost. Or he did not sit down and worry about the consequences. He had a relationship with his God. And he intended to keep that relationship. Verse 11 says, Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. These men conspired against Daniel. And I want you to think about this for just a moment. These aren't just men. These are Daniel's colleagues. These are Daniel's co-workers. Imagine if you had a co-worker like that or co-workers like that. And I know some of you are saying, I have co-workers like that. And maybe you probably do. Their true colors haven't fully come through as yet. But as they push this, what they're calling or are referred to as a pandemic, things begin to heat up. Things begin to get hot. And that's when true colors begin to show through. Because when things get hot, that is when true colors begin to surface. An eyewitness account said that in, in communist Russia, there were no resistance to all the arrests that were being made. People began to resist communism and they began to be arrested and nobody, nobody um, made a resistance to it. In fact, an applause broke out when rights were taken away. And the same thing is happening today. People want their rights taken away. People want your rights taken away. No longer do they want worship. No longer do they want church because church is under attack. Our worship of Almighty God, the one true God, is under attack. You know, heat has a way of bringing true colors to the surface. Why do you think that works will be tried by fire? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. Paul says, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet, as by fire. Fire is a purifier. Fire is a revealer of the true inside person. Look at what happens next in Daniel chapter 6, verse 12 through 13. Then they came there and said before the king concerning the, the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction? that everyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, he's not part of us, he's from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. They were spying on Daniel. They go running off to tattle on Daniel to the king. But they make the king um, confirm 
that he had indeed signed the injunction. He had indeed signed the document just in case somehow he had forgotten to do it or just in case he, he had misplaced the document somewhere and he, he didn't know where it was or what he had done. They made sure that the king understood the document was irrevocable and the king admitted that. Then the king still had no clue about their deviousness because, you know, cunning has, does not just reveal itself until it is too late. You know, I read a first-hand quote from someone who lived through communism. He said, we didn't love freedom enough, and even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. That's the problem, problem with flattery, lies, and deceit. You have no awareness of the real situation until it's too late, and then bam, it has you. It's got you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Look at what happens to the king when they reveal their true desire and tell him that Daniel has been praying three times a day. But wait, wait, wait a second. How do they know that Daniel has been praying and petitioning three times a day? The only logical conclusion that we can come to is that they had been watching Daniel, that they had been spying on Daniel. And the king now realizes exactly what's going on. He realizes that they, they set the whole thing up. He now realizes that they're watching Daniel. He, they, he realizes not that they're envious of Daniel. He realizes that they want to get rid of Daniel. So all of this is a ploy for them to get rid of Daniel because they're envious of him and and the king is in real despair look at verse 14 then the king when he heard these words was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel and he labored till the sun went down to rescue him the king was no longer feeling pumped up. The king was no longer feeling bigged up. The king was no longer feeling cocky. He was no long, longer feeling sure of himself like he was somebody. He is now in deep distress. And now these, these men move in for the kill. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 through 24. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. That's the first thing they say. They, they make sure that the king understands that he can't change it. He just can't go out there and change Daniel's fate. He has already sealed his fate, and it is sealed. There's nothing that he can do. It cannot be changed. And they make sure that the king understands that. Verse 16. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually. Daniel just didn't serve him part time. He wasn't just a Sunday worshiper. He wasn't just a one day a week Christian. He served him continually. And the king knew that Daniel served God continually because he said it twice, not just one time, but twice. He said, the God that you serve continually. He's always saying that. Because he knew that Daniel was a worshiper of Almighty God. A continuous worship. Verse 17. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords. That nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. The king had no choice but to throw Daniel into the den of lions according to the injunction that he had signed. These men were in agreement all the way. They agreed to conspire together. And that is how deviousness is. Those who are devious, they, they, that's the same way that they act. Those who seek 
um, full control, who wants to control the whole world, those who want what others have. They come in agreement and they create laws that make it seem like it's for your best interests. It's for your good. You know, we're doing this for you. We want you safe. All the time, the noose is slowly tightening around your neck. The main aim of deceivers is to have the injunction signed and a stone laid over the mouth and the seal, the signet ring sealed by the king and by his government. Their signet rings are sealed, the document is signed, sealed, and delivered that your situation cannot be changed because the full force of government is behind it. But God, God is able to deliver us. So we will not panic. We will not fret. We will have confidence that our God is able to deliver us and he will deliver us. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 12. For I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that date. But if he chooses not to deliver us, if he chooses not to, 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 to deliver us out of the situation that we are in, we are not going to argue. We are not going to fight. We are, are not going to, to, to complain. Only, only know this. Know this one thing. We will not worship the God of science. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 through 18 says, We have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king, or government. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. We have no interest in worshiping at your altars. We have no interest in worshiping your gods. We have no interest in learning the deep things of Satan. We have no interest in learning his secret things. We serve the one true God, almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Everything you see, God has created, and it is him to whom we have to give an account. It's to him Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And it is him that we serve and we will worship. Listen to this. The next morning, the king runs out to the lion's den to see if God Almighty had protected and saved Daniel from the lions. When he found that God did deliver him from the lions, he was so happy. He was so relieved. He commanded and Daniel was taken up out of the lion's den. But now he's angry at those who, who plotted against Daniel. He's upset because of the trickery that they did. He's upset because of the flattery. Daniel chapter 6 verse 24 says, And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions. They, their children, and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. The king commanded that those same men who had come into agreement to falsely accuse Daniel were to be thrown into the lion's den. That same lion's den that they had conspired to have Daniel thrown into and Daniel was cast in there. Now they are the ones who are going to be cast into that, that, that same den. Remember the same judgment that they had laid out for Daniel was now theirs. But not just theirs alone, but their wives and their children as well. They weren't just the ones that were, were cast into to the den of lions. They brought their wives. They brought their children. What a distress that family was in. All because of these men deceitfulness. All because of their lies. They, they're plotting. They're cheating. Payback ain't no beach trip. I'm telling you. Payback ain't no beach trip. It will cost you all you have. 
It will cost you all you care about. You cannot mess with the children of God without offending God. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All you who destroy the earth, all you who plot evil against Christians, all you who persecute the children of God, all you who deceive the citizens of the world through flattery, God is not asleep, for he neither slumbers nor sleeps, but his eye is ever watchful and is always on the righteous to deliver them. And he knows the way of the sinner as well. They shall not escape. You who spread a net for someone else's feet, how will your feet be kept from falling into the same trap that you have set for someone else? This is your opportunity. Today is the day of repentance. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that is offered to you the opportunity for forgiveness. Tomorrow is promised to no man. Remember, the lake of fire is hot and eternity is a long, long time. Choose wisely whom you will serve. I'm telling you, you do not want to be caught on the wrong side when Jesus returns with his rewards in his hand. Good or bad, when Jesus breaks that eastern sky, he comes back for his church. When he comes back for his people, the, the scripture tells us that his rewards are with him. And he will give to each one according to their deeds. What they have done, he will give them back. Good or bad, his rewards are with him. Because, as I said... Payback is no beach trip. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him as Lord and Savior? I'm telling you, he's coming back real, real soon. He's coming back for those who are waiting for him, those who love him, those who are serving him. He's not coming back for everybody. That's a lie. It's a lie. He is not coming back for everybody. Not everybody is going to be saved. Only those who have confessed their sins. Only those who are living for Jesus. Only those who are walking on the paths of righteousness. Only those who have turned their backs on the world and now have their eye on the cross of Jesus. Those are the ones that Jesus is coming back for. And as I said, his rewards are with him. Would you like to know Jesus? Would you like to get good rewards? Would you like to live with him in eternity? All you have to do is to ask because Jesus has made it easy for us. He paid the price on the cross. He died that you might live. And he's offering this to you today. All you got to do is to ask. And he will give. Freely give. It cost Jesus everything, but it cost you nothing. All you got to do is to ask him. If, if you want to um, his salvation, all you got to do is to ask. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you. Give me boldness and confidence. Help me to witness to my own loved ones that they may be saved, that they may serve you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. For I ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, that simple prayer, the Lord will hear your prayer. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, what you got to do is you have to start praying. Just Begin to pray. When I first got saved, I, I had forgotten. I, I used to go to church when, when I was young then. I got away. I, I was in the military, strayed from the Lord, and I came back to the Lord in my 20s, and I didn't know how to pray. I'd forgotten scripture and stuff. And All you got to do is to start praying. Read the Psalms. The Psalms will help you to learn to pray. So you got to pray. Then you got to get a Bible. Go buy a Bible or dust the one off on, on, on your bookshelf and begin to read it. You've got to read it. You can download the electronic Bible and listen to it. I encourage that. But 
there's no replacement for actually reading the scriptures. The eyes are the gateway to the souls. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You've got to read it. You've got to get it in your soul so you can believe it. Because Jesus is coming back real soon. Get a highlighter. Highlight the promises. Jesus will fulfill every promise that he has ever made. If he made you a promise, he will, he will fulfill it. Last thing I want you to do is to find yourself a Bible-believing church, one who still believes that there's a right way and that there's a wrong way. A church who does not embrace the world and does not embrace the things of the world that can live any old way. No, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. Jesus is coming back for those who are on the right way. So join that church. Be discipled in that church. Work in that church. When Jesus comes back, He'll find your deeds, he'll find your work, they'll be tried by fire, and they will survive, and you will get yourself a good reward, and you'll go to live with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us, and I really appreciate how you join in every Sunday and, and um, watch our videos and how you support our website. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. My name's Kenny Yates. This is Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.